Stop! Stop! If you took the money, get the hell out of You just got a small taste of the reaction that ceasefire protesters elicited when they confronted Senator Kirsten Gillibrand about her refusal to support a ceasefire. And we're starting to see this growing trend where attendees at these types of events feel emboldened to attack and even put their hands on protesters for daring to confront Democratic Party royalty in some instances. Now, thankfully, it didn't actually get physical at Gillibrand's event, but there was one elderly man who was seemingly prepared to hit a protester with his cane had a woman not intervened. So let's take a look at what happened and then we'll discuss it when we come back. Gillibrand, how can you say that you represent New Yorkers when 70% of this country demands a ceasefire in Gaza, when 45% of New Yorkers demand a ceasefire, when 53% of New Yorkers do not want to send Israeli funding or military aid anymore? Senator Gillibrand, you received $366,000 from pro-Israel lobbies in this past election cycle. Why are you allowing your interests to be bought by foreign government? If you took the money that you had given to Israel, the $15 billion you gave to Israel of our taxpayer money. You are lying to the people, saying there is a peace process when Israel is the one that has been consistently declining a ceasefire. 25-year-old Aaron Bushnell gave up his life, immolating his last words for free Palestine. The people yelling at the ceasefire protesters should be absolutely ashamed of themselves there. And yes, I hate to break it to those Democratic Party sycophants, but when politicians refuse to listen to their constituents, those constituents are entitled to confront them if that opportunity is presented to them. And one of the protesters made a point about how Gillibrand isn't just not supporting a ceasefire, but she took $366,000 from the Israel lobby. So this is corruption. We're talking about foreign interference when Kirsten Gillibrand is supposed to be representing New Yorkers and what they want. And as the protesters pointed out, a majority of Democrats want a ceasefire. It's not just Democrats, it's a majority of independents and Republicans as well. So if they're refusing to actually listen to their constituents, then things like this are going to happen. But there's more because a ceasefire protester disrupted a Jill Biden rally and the attendees were very quick to put her hand, put their hands on her, unlike at the Gillibrand event. So let's watch that. These people care more about civility and politeness than a literal genocide that's going on. And it is genuinely sickening. And it's infuriating to see them just grab her and put their hands on her. They feel entitled to just assault this young woman all because the dumbass speech that they were listening to was disrupted. But no, you don't have the right to put your hands on people. Take your hands off of her. That made me so pissed off. But at an Adam Schiff event, 
Look at what happened when one person, his constituent, decided to try to confront him about the same issue. It feels so dystopian to see someone get carried away as they're screaming and begging a politician to stop supporting a genocide while happy campaign music plays in the background. I feel like asking your representative and somebody who wants to be a senator to stop supporting a genocide is a pretty reasonable ask, but apparently not in 2024 American politics, right? Now, if you're wondering who's voting for politicians like Adam Schiff, who supports genocide in defiance of his own base, well, these kind of people. And to be fair, I don't necessarily believe that these folks are pro-genocide per se, but I think that they just don't care and they don't want to hear about it and they don't want to be bothered by people who do care, right? The concerns of these young people don't resonate with them because they're in this bubble and think that being anti-Trump is all that's expected of Democratic Party politicians. And so long as they're sufficiently anti-Trump and they say orange man bad, then they check the boxes for them, every single box. They don't care about any other issues. It's just that. But on the subject of protesters being mistreated, I do want to quickly deviate away from the ceasefire protest and talk about a climate defiance protest of Joe Manchin, because look at what happened when he was confronted about his corruption. Joe Manchin you sold our futures and you've gotten rich doing it. You sick fuck. How dare you? Good for them. And shame on the person who literally physically assaulted that protester. I feel like there should be action taken against that person and the protester who was shoved should press charges because that's not okay. This is somebody who has the right to confront a public official for doing terrible things. And it's so funny how Manchin was laughing at the beginning because, you know, this happens all the time. His events are disrupted. But his demeanor changed like that as soon as he was called a sick fuck. And again, this, I think, is a great example as to how much our society prioritizes civility over the actual crises induced by these politicians. You know, you can destroy the planet, pollute our water, frack in our backyard, but don't you dare curse. Saying naughty words is not acceptable. Genocide? Mm, that's fine. Uh, killing off the planet? That's fine. Just please be polite when you try to confront these politicians. It's just... It's ridiculous. But all of these disruptions, they're happening more and more because our politicians more and more aren't responding to the needs of the people. And a lot of people, especially young people, feel this way. And it's not just young people, to be fair, but young, more progressive minded people are forced to share a party with older, more liberal leaning voters that tend to value comfort and respectability over the policies that leftists support. Hence why they're so loyal to the Democratic Party politicians like Adam Schiff and Joe Biden, who represent a return to the more traditional and respectable style of politics that they're nostalgic for. And the New York Times actually spoke to these types of people who they call Biden superfans. And from their perspective, they genuinely believe that the rest of us have lost our minds. And they don't think that Biden gets enough credit for the things that he's managed to accomplish. But when you dive into the article, you really begin to see why there's this disconnect between leftists and liberals within the Democratic Party. Because while us leftists tend to prioritize policy above all else, well, liberals seemingly support Biden for very superficial reasons, at least the ones that they talk to do. For example, they think that Biden is nice and he has good looking eyes. Therefore, that's why they support him. So they talked to about two dozen people and we'll get to some of the specific things that they said, the reasons why they support Biden. But there's one person that they talked to who was hissing 
at a ceasefire protester. And I want to show you what they say and why they defended Biden. Quote, after protesters calling for a ceasefire in Gaza interrupted Mr. Biden's speech in January at a South Carolina church, one woman cried out, you're an understanding person. They don't realize that. You're a good man. That was Tommy Green, 74, of Charleston. She said that she first met Mr. Biden at a town hall meeting sometime around 2018 and that she had since become friends with Jill Biden. Quote, he is the right person to take us where we need to be, Miss Green said. He is very compassionate and he's smart. He relates to people. Of his detractors, she said, I just wish they could see and feel what I feel. And this is really interesting to me because... To her, it's inconceivable that Biden could be guilty of the things that the protesters are accusing him of because he's nice. You can't support a genocide if you're nice, or at least if you do support a genocide and you're nice, you can kind of slide under the radar, right? At least for Tommy. But other people, they're not really going to give him a pass because he's a nice person. And I hate to break it to you, nice people don't give weapons to a country that's killed thousands of people, including 14,000 kids. And the problem with this mentality is that she's treating Biden like a celebrity when he's not a celebrity. He's the fucking president of the United States. And also, she's not extending that empathy to Biden's detractors and Palestinians that she wants extended to her. And frankly, her feelings about Biden are irrelevant. The policy is the only thing that matters because we're talking about somebody who is a public servant, Biden is not an actor or a musician, right? He is the president of the United States and thus needs to be treated as such, not like a fucking celebrity. But I mean, this is kind of the mentality that you see throughout this article. So there's a, there's a couple of more uh, examples that I want to show you because you're going to get the sense that there is a general trend here. Quote, Miss Russell, a 77-year-old retired legal secretary, thinks Biden would fit right in in her community. Quote, he'd come on by Earp Street, she said. I could picture going up to him and saying, hi, Joe, I can see him here. She identifies with him, she said, and admires his integrity and his record. She also loves his eyes, so she's horny for him. Quote, I'm sorry Joe doesn't know how much I love him, but I do love Joe, said Constance Wynn, 73, of Wilkes Bar, PA. I don't even know why people want to pester the man because the man has things to do. Yeah, like genocide. Susan D. Wagner, a founder of Markers for Democracy, which pushes get out the vote efforts through the writing of postcards, has begun a project to send thank you notes to Mr. Biden for his work and to show him he has some <laughs> support at a challenging moment. It did seem like he was taking his lumps and could use a little bit of bucking up, said Miss Wagner. <laughs> it's so fucking ridiculous, said Miss Wagner. 66, who lives in Manhattan and is heavily involved in grassroots activism. Quote, I wrote that in this day and age, every once in a while, somebody needs a smiling face. And I put a little, smi <laughs> little smiling face on it. <laughs> Dakota Galvin, 28, has a day job in human resources at a construction company, but he also serves as the chair of the Davidson Democrats, a county party organization based in Nashville. He loves Mr. Biden. Quote, and I feel like I'm the only one, he said, arguing that the news media had overwhelmingly focused on Mr. Biden's tepid support. Does anybody care that I exist? We don't actually. Now, out of the two dozen or so people that they spoke to, there was only one Biden superfan that seemingly cared at all about policy. And it was a 34-year-old former Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren supporter who basically keeps a text document on her phone about all of his accomplishments. Credit where it's due. At least that's somebody who has a specific concrete reason for supporting biden that's somebody who can actually have a conversation with and reason with but as for the rest of these folks i mean they're basing their support for biden purely on his personality and vibes or because they want to fuck him that's why we're beginning to see this wedge between liberals and leftists within the democratic party leftists care about policy and want results Whereas liberals seem to care more about personality and just care about civility. I wouldn't necessarily say that these differences are irreconcilable, but I do find this trend really worrying because this mentality is dangerous and culty. And we already have a cult when it comes to Donald Trump supporters. We don't need a blue MAGA cult, right? We don't need that.
this is disgusting sycophancy and they need to stop and be objective about the politicians that they support. But even though these Democratic Party loyalists might hate to see politicians that they idolize get challenged at town hall events, my hope is that these disruptions break them out of that bubble or the spell that they're under by these politicians. And I hope that they at least do a little bit of research and realize, okay, maybe there's a reason why these protesters uh, are here. Maybe there's a reason why this keeps happening. And they don't have to agree with the protesters. They don't have to agree with us leftists. They can think that we're too radical. But if they expect us to share a party with them and that's necessary for Democrats to win elections, they should at least make an attempt to understand where we're coming from at the very least, because these are valid concerns and ignoring the concerns of young people is a recipe for disaster in November if you actually do care about Biden winning. Mom. I'm gay. Gays. Gays. Mom. I'm transgender. Gender. 